Hey, welcome to Graphic Policy Television, GPTV. I'm Brett. It's Wednesday. It means it's New Comic Book Day, and new comics are hitting shelves physically, digitally, all across the world. It's like the best day of the week. So get to your local comic book shop and, like, go get some comics. DC has hooked us up with a bunch more comics. I'm going to show them off, but it's going to be a little bit different than uh, previous videos, mostly because, well, I screwed up. So last week, I reviewed uh, Mother Panic Volume 1, which is actually out this week. It is the first volume of the series from DC's Young animal imprint from writer Jody Hauser, our artist Tommy Lee Edwards, and Sean Crystal. Uh, basically, DC's Young Animal is kind of the bridge between Vertigo and DC Comics. Mother Panic is a character that's set in Gotham in uh, Batman's realm, and she fully, you know, she interacts with Bat Batwoman, and Batman's involved. Like, it's, this is an actual, like, in-continuity story. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's hardcore Batman. There's there's uh, there's tons of violence. There's a uh, really messed up story. It's absolutely fantastic. I, I beyond recommend it. I think you should go and check it out. Uh, it is actually in stores this week, and then it'll be in uh, in uh, shops like Amazon next week. Uh, everything I said last week applies to this one. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Very short or short review of that because I'm going to do some single issues. Yeah, we don't normally do single issues on there, but. I kind of want to change things up a little, and we're going to see how this goes over. So we've got three first issues that are coming out this week. DC Comics has hooked us up with these as well. So I want to uh, highlight some awesomeness that they are releasing. Two comics kind of go together, and then the third one, not so much. So let's go with the ones that go together. Uh, we're going to discuss the Legion of Superheroes Bugs Bunny comic by uh, Sam Humphreys. Uh, I want to get all the names right. Uh, Tom Grumet is the penciler. Scott Hanna, inker. Josh Reed, letterer. Steve Bucciolato is a colorist. Um, Carl Kessel is a cover anchor. Tyne Templeton did some variants. Um, basically, it brings together the Legion of Superheroes and Bugs Bunny, and there is a backup story, and we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that backup story when we get to it. Um, and what DC's doing for, like, next couple weeks is mashing up DC comic characters with their Looney Tunes. Now, they've already done this with Hanna-Barbera characters, and it was awesome. So, this is our first uh, kind of inkling as to how good the mashup with Looney Tunes works out. And I have to say, it works really, really well. The, the writers are clearly having fun, and uh, what comes out of this is fun. Best way of describing it is, I had fun reading this. It, basically, the story is uh, is uh, the Legion of Superhero uh, superheroes need to revive Supergirl, who is injured and like in a coma, and they need to go reach out for Superboy. But instead, Bugs Bunny is brought back, and uh, hijinks ensue. It's really, really hilarious, and and one of the things I, I love about this is it makes fun of itself. Uh, the comic is uh, a, is definitely the. The name of the game is fun. Like, you could tell that Sam Humphreys, uh, who is a great writer and is doing a kick-ass job on um, in Green Lanterns, is uh, is having some fun with this as well. So, I mean, it's it basically, it's just kind of playing off, like, that angst and uh, teenage drama that, that, you know, I think of when I think of, like, things like The Legion of Superheroes and Teen Titans and stuff like that, and just... And it just amps it up with kind of a Looney Tunes vibe about it. And then throw Bugs Bunny in there with some classic riffs on Bugs. And um, it's it works really, really, really well. Uh, you saw some of the art. The art is is fun. It works really... It works. It works. This is the best way of describing it. Um, the main stories all have some backup stories. This one's by Juan Manuel Ortiz. Um, with special thanks to Mark Prudex. Purdue. Purdue, I guess. Uh, you can check out some of the art there. Kind of similar story as to the main story. Uh, I mean, actually very similar, but kind of done in a more Looney Tunes way. But uh, it's cool. It has a look of um, uh, Legion of Superhero, not Legion of Superheroes, the, the Justice League cartoon from way back in the day. Um, and, um, or, yeah, it was Legion of Superheroes comic cartoon from way back in the day. Uh, and, and again, it's just kind of like a different riff on the same story. And it's, it's funny. It's really, really funny. It's entertaining. You know, if you want a comic that you can just read, relax, and enjoy, you know, and, and like you like Legion of Superheroes and you kind of want to see something like parodied a little bit, this is well worth it. Uh, also out is the Martian Manhunter Marvin the Martian combination. Uh, so this one's from Steve Orlando, Frank Barbieri are the writers, and let's get all the credits here. 
Uh, we got Aaron Lopresti is a pencil and cover artist. Jerome Moore, inker, high fives color. Carlos M. Mangual is the letterer. And the story has exactly what it sounds like. Marvin the Martian meets uh, Martian Manhunter. I love Marvin the Martian. He was one of my favorite Looney Tune cartoon uh, characters. I used to do his voice all the time. It was like the one character I could do. I'm not going to do it because I really don't feel like being ridiculed. Um, and basically, uh, Marsh Manhunter gets a distress call from Marsh the Manhunter, or Marsh, Marvin the Martian. Let's see how many times I can say Martian in this video. Uh, Marsh the Manhunter gets a distress call or a message from Marvin the Martian, and then Marvin the Martian shows up and wants to destroy Earth because that's what like Marvin the Martian does. So it's Marsh the Manhunter versus Marvin the Martian. It's Martian on Martian crime in uh, in the DC universe. It's funny. It's entertaining. Uh, it's a little bit more of a serious take on Marvin the Martian as opposed to like the Legion of Superheroes one, which is just like straight up goofy. Uh, you know, Martian Manhunter kind of reflecting on his being a Martian in the DC universe as well. A little bit more serious. Works really well. Uh, it's another one that you can just read, enjoy, have fun. Uh, there's also another backup in this one. This one written by Jim Fanning. And um, we're just going to show some of the art. So this is some of the art of the main story. And then the Jim Fanning backup has more of the, like, kind of an updated Looney Tunes vibe about it. Uh, that, too, is, is funny. It's more in the old school Marvin the Martian cartoons as opposed to being, like, a more serious story. Sent, like, the DC Universe is the first one. It's a little bit different than uh, the Looney Tunes or the uh, Legion of Superheroes uh, Bugs Bunny one in that it's pretty much very similar stories, just kind of, like, different takes on it. Uh, this one is just two very different stories and different styles. Awesome entertainment. Like, both of these, I, I highly recommend in the fact that you can go read them, you can enjoy them, you can put them down, they're going to put a smile on your face, they're, they're funny. They're just funny, fun comics that kids can enjoy, that adults can enjoy. It's exactly what comics should be. Uh, on the serious end of matters, it's the first issue. we got Dark Days, The Forge. Now, it's been leading up and hinting for quite a long time. Um, Scott Snyder said he has been putting in the hints and, uh, and building to this for, for years at this point. I want to get all the credits inside. Uh, so writer Scott Snyder, James Tinian IV, with art by Jim Lee, Andy Kubert, and John Romita Jr. Uh, inks by Scott Williams, Klaus Jansen, Danny Meeky, uh, Alex Sinclair with Jeremiah Skipper on color, Steve Wan's letter, and then a cover by Jim Lee, Scott Williams, and Alex Sinclair, and a bunch of variants. I'm not going to go over it because a lot of people. Uh, basically, this is an awesome uh, uh, build-up issue. Uh, this is the the Five minutes before the the credits start rolling, this is the zero issue that should get you interested in what's going to come, and it does it. It really goes back into the DC Universe history and uh, gives us a hell of a lot of questions and, a, and asks us the readers to try to figure out what's going on in a good way. Uh, the, my one criticism for DC Comics as a whole and in the past has always been, if you didn't know the DC Comics history, a lot of stuff like this was impenetrable. What I think is done really, really well here is that if you don't know that history, you still can enjoy the comic. If you know that history, you'll probably enjoy it even more because there's more things hinted at. Uh, there's like nods and winks and uh, and items like that that you can pick up on. You don't need to read uh, Scott Snyder, uh, Scott Snyder's Batman. You don't need to read James Tinian's writing at all in like any of the stuff he's written. You can go dive into this and enjoy it. Basically, we just know that Batman's been planning for like shit hitting the fan, and this is kind of I think the shit hitting the fan. Um, the, the comic is, is really, really solid, it's entertaining, it's, uh, it has me excited to see what's coming next. Part of my, like, trepidation and nervousness about this was the fact that DC's Rebirth has been so positive, so uplifting in many ways. Uh, it's been, there have been fun, it's been entertaining, and I was hate, I was feared that this was going to get back to, like, dark and gritty and grim comics of like the 90s and the new 52 that just didn't work so well 
it's not that. While it's a little bit maybe darker than like Rebirth, it fits within Batman really, really well. Um, it's an entertaining comic in that it builds the mystery as to what's to come, and it covers a hell of a lot. Hawkman's touched on. Um, I don't even want to go into uh, one other character that appears that's definitely going to get fans excited, and then an ending that definitely had me saying, what the hell? Green Lantern's involved. Um, you know, Duke Thomas is involved. There's just so much thrown in here that you got to read it to get it. Now, if you've been reading Snyder's Batman run or read Snyder's Batman run, you'll appreciate it even more. If you've been reading Batman since, you'll you'll also like really, really appreciate it more. If you know DC history, you'll probably love this because I'm sure there's stuff in this that I did not pick up on. And I've read DC for probably like seven, eight years straight at this point, And I clearly have missed stuff in this. So, um, really, really cool uh, first issue. Plus, like, you, you can see it on here. It's like that old school uh, uh, foil cover, which we just don't see anymore and got killed in the 90s, or I should say killed the industry in the 90s. It's back. It's used sparingly, so a nice positive on that. Uh, plus, there's that, like, this badass cover that I didn't even notice. Those are, like, people tied up on the leg of the Batman statue or the the evil Batman statue. That's like messed up stuff. Pretty badass. Uh, this seems like a, a an event that's going to tie into like Kirby's concepts and and uh, DC history and multiverse and, and tons of different characters and it has me excited. I've read this and really want to see what comes next. So absolutely love this. I think it's really, really cool. Great one. If you want to find out what's going on for this event and plan on reading it, obviously, if you don't care about the event, I'm not going to recommend this. But if you want, if you're like nervous like I was, I think this should calm you down a bit and get you interested in seeing what's coming. If you just want to pick up comics on their own and read them, these two I, I highly recommend. Also out this week is the second volume of Nightwing, uh, which is good if you've been enjoying the Nightwing series. It's it's entertaining. It doesn't change at all. The second volume is is good, and if you joined the first enjoyed the first volume, you'll like the second volume, which uh, has some nice twists when it comes to some villains and a support group and stuff like that. Uh, also out is the first volume of Teen Titans. Um, highly recommend that. I love this Teen Titans group. Damian Wayne as the leader of this group has been awesome, just because he's such a little prick and doesn't really fit all that great when it comes to leadership. So uh, seeing him having to deal with all that is, is top notch. Uh, if you are into any of this stuff, you should go to your local comic book shop and go buy them. Uh, go support your local comic book shop first and foremost. If you don't have a comic book shop near you, there's going to be links beneath this video where you can buy everything that I've mentioned today in this video. Um, all those are going to be affiliate links, so we do get a small percentage of that, but we like to be transparent and let you know about that. But by purchasing through that, through that you do help support our site. Uh, if you're into DC Comics, if you're into Batman or Looney Tunes or Marsh, Martian Manhunter or Legion Superheroes or whatever, you should check us out every single day at graphicpolicy.com. Of course, we're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all at Graphic Policy, keeping it nice and consistent. As always, thank you, DC Comics, for hooking us up with some comics. And until next time, keep reading those comics. And keep it geeky. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos. Or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.